Hey, what's going on everybody? In this episode, I'm going to help you understand the chmod command, or chmod, and we're going to figure out what the file permissions are, how to change file permissions, and how to understand the octal that is often used with this command. It could be a little confusing at first, but I actually think this is a much easier way of doing things than the way you often see, which I'll show you guys probably in the next episode. So basically, here's what's going to happen. When you list the contents of a directory, you get all this junk over here on the side. So if it starts with a D, it's a directory, and then you have these permissions. So read is R, write is W, and X is execute. So we have read, write, execute, read, write, execute, read, write, execute. What in the world? Why is there three of the same thing? Well, there's actually three groups here. This one refers to permissions for the file owner, or in this case, student. This one, this group here, refers to permissions to the group, anyone in the students group. And then this one here is everybody else. So in the context of directories, what does an X mean? How do you execute a directory? Well, it just allows you to enter that directory. So let's go ahead and change directories. So now we are in our home directory and we can say LS, still a bunch of directories. So actually let's create a file. And now we have one file created and we'll say ls-l. And now it looks a little bit different. We have some more options on here, and you can see this one is the file. First thing you'll notice is it starts with a dash. So a dash is a file, a d is a directory. We can change these permissions by saying chmod and passing in some number. So we'll talk about how you figure out what this number is, but let's just go through an example of opening the permissions as much as possible. Basically, anybody can do anything they want with this file. So we will say chmod777 file. Now when we say ls-l, and we can actually pass in the name of that file, you can see these are the permissions now. Read, write, execute, read, write, execute, read, write, execute. So let's talk a little bit about these numbers here. Each seven refers to a group. So just like these three here refer to a group, these three, and then these three, each one of these sevens assign values to each one of these groups. So RWX can be represented with the number seven. So we have seven, seven, seven. So seven is the highest permissions. All right, now I'm gonna talk a little bit about how you can choose what number you want there. And this can be a little confusing at first, so pay attention, but it's definitely gonna make sense if you watch this enough times. So inside of a group, we have read, write, execute, each one of these has a value. So X is one, W is two, and R is four. If you add up one, two, and four, what do you get? You get seven. So let me zoom in here a little bit and we'll go through this one more time. X is one, W is two, R is four. You add them up and you get seven. So let's talk about what if you did chmod666 file. Let's try that. And then we'll say ls-l file. Now we have rw dash, rw dash, rw dash. So basically we subtracted one, which removed that one value. So let's try another one and I'll see if you can guess what is going to happen. If we say chmod444 file. Think about which position has the value four and what the final result's going to be and we'll check it now. You can see it's read, read, read. That's because the read has a value of four. So we got rid of the two and the one. So what if you wanted it to be read and execute? Well, it would be four plus one. So we would say chmod 555, and there we got read and execute, read and execute, read and execute. So as you can tell, each number that you can use has an associated permission. Seven is full access, four is read only, five is read and execute. So now you have a basic understanding of how that works. Let's take a look at a table that shows all the different options. Here is an article from Linode listing out these options. So zero is nothing, one is execute, two is write, and then when you go to three, you basically add those two together to get write and execute. Four is read, five is read and execute, six is read and write, and then seven is read, write, execute. 
So another way you often see this visualized is with binary. So obviously each one of these values, read, write, and execute can either be on or off, and that could be represented with a zero or a one. So if you take a look at this one, for example, we got execute, write is skipped, and then we have read. So we have one for on, zero, and then one. So you can see that matches the same pattern where one is a value and zero is a dash. And then if you pretty much take this value in binary and convert it to octal or decimal, we get the value five. Now when we've been given these permissions, we've been doing them in group of three, seven, 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 for example. However, you don't have to do all the same. You can split it out into different groups. We can use different values for each group. So let's take an example where instead of doing three of the same numbers, we actually do five, six, seven. Now when we take a look at this file, the first is read and execute, the next is read and write, and then the next is read, write, execute. All right, so now that you have a pretty decent understanding of this command, let's go through an example. And what I wanna do is I wanna switch user over to our student user, which we created in, I think, the previous episode or the video before that. And we'll take a look at the files in here. We have this assignment here. What we could do is we could change the permission on this and let's just get a clean slate real quick. So we're gonna say chmod and let's say we only want this to be able to be seen by other students and ourselves. So our username is student, but we're part of a group called students. So this section here refers to ourself, read and write, that's good. This next section is our group, the group, which is students, read and write, that's good. And then if we want to prevent anyone else from seeing it, all we would do is remove this permission. So we're going to say 660 assignment. And I got six because four plus two, four plus two. And then zero to remove all of these. Hit enter. Now ls dash l. And we can see we removed that read permission for everybody else. So when we are on another user, we'll see if we can go see that file. We'll say cat home student. We can see the assignment file exists which I literally didn't even spell that right. I'm so dumb. All right, we're gonna type that out, hit enter, and it says permission denied. So in order to see this, well, we need to either be pseudo or be in the student's group. So let's add ourselves to the student group, pseudo user mod ag students, and we'll just put ourselves here. All right, and now let's reissue this command. And I think we need a refresh here, so we'll just re-log in. And now let's say that command again. All right, and there we go. We did not get permission denied. Obviously, there's nothing in that file, so nothing shows up, but it is working. We could also show an example where we remove access for the group as well. So let's just do that with a sudo command to make it easier. And we'll say chmod 600 and then home student assignment net. All right, and then we'll list those files. So ls-l forward slash home student. You can see we can only read and write if we are the owner, which is this first group here, which the owner is student. We are not student as you can see. So we shouldn't be able to access that file at all. Let's see. And you can see it says permission denied. All right, wow, that was a lot. If the use of octal, the value zero through seven, didn't really settle with you well, there's another way that you can work with permissions, and that's what we're gonna take a look at in the next episode. It's probably important that you understand both ways of working with these files.